Hi, this is Tim Layton with blackandwhitefineart.net and I'm going to show you how you can make your own UV printer today from uh, just common parts and supplies from your hardware store. So everything that I'm going to show you here is uh, from my local hardware store which happens to be Home Depot. But uh, if you're into alternative printing or antique printing or Authentic printing, however you want to call it, from the, you know, ranging from the 18, I guess technically 1839 through, you know, the uh, turn of the century. Um, printing out paper, meaning that it's not developed, it's exposed with UV light, uh, this will help you do that. So I'm going to show you in this segment all the components and parts uh, that you need. And this is just my own. Uh, you know, approach. Certainly, you can probably use this. Uh, you know, uh, you know, as stated here, or you can come up with your own. So, what I started off with was some three-quarter inch, as you'll see here, uh, plywood. This is 24 inches wide and 36 inches deep. And the reason I went with that uh, dimension was because I went with 24 inch fluorescent uh, fixtures here that you see. This ballast will supply uh, two. Uh, lights. So I've got a total of six, two, four, six. I left one in the box so that you could see um, what I had here. So wrap light um, available from Home Depot. The thing to note here, it's a T8 uh, style lamp and it's 24 inches long. So uh, this would actually be the top. I'm going to attach these fixtures uh, to this base and um, I'm going to need some electrical connectors here, some 14-3 electrical wire to wire all this together. This is the junction box where all this, uh, the wires would be coming in. You see that I laid this out here. Uh, these are just 3 8 inch uh, wire fasteners where they go on the side and they keep uh, the wire from scraping up against the uh, metal edge. This is the AC cord and you see the style that uh, I've got here, this is a good heavy duty cord. Well, I'll just wire this in and plug all this in. So that will uh, take care of the top part. And my plan, uh, just so you know, I built this to the dimension of doing up to 16 by 20 uh, prints. I uh, print in the dark room at that size. And uh, so I print everything from, you know, contact prints down to my, you know, medium format size all the way through uh, 16 by 20. So uh, you will need some kind of wood screws. So I just got some three quarter inch number eight wood screws to fasten the fixtures to the board here. Um, I, I do have some finished nails sitting here, which I may use on the bottom piece. Uh, I'm not sure, but I wanted to mention that. Uh, on this side, uh, this is going to be the bottom. So once again, 24 by 36. What you're seeing here on uh, you know, these boards here are basically uh, one by eight. That means it's three quarters of an inch and about eight inches wide. And I think the trim size is seven and three quarter. These are going to be the side panels that uh, stand up here along all sides. That's going to be the base. And then the idea is to lay the light source over the top and then you slide in the contact print frame underneath. So uh, parts for this. I've got some feet that I plan on screwing on the bottom of this. Some corner brackets and what I'm going to do with these is basically um, whenever I take uh, the boards, the, the one by eights, and I uh, fasten them here, I'm going to lay down a bead of liquid nails and you'll see that I've got heavy duty liquid nails here. And then I'll use these clamps here to basically uh, you know, fasten that and attach that. So um, I'll let that dry and set up overnight, even though it, it, I think the directions say it is set up in, you know, about an hour or so. And then the plan with the, the corner braces is to use them in the corners to reinforce and give a little bit more rigidity uh, to the frame. So that takes care of that. You would obviously need a tape measure. I'm using a square because I actually cut all of my own uh, boards here, but you can certainly have your hardware store do that for you if you don't have, you know, saws or equipment like that. Um, screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, 
to uh, put in the wood screws uh, to tighten the fixtures down. Obviously a pencil, I'm just using a carpenter's pencil. A wire stripper, um, you're gonna need that on your electrical wire whenever you start connecting everything together and using your, your wire connectors here. And of course, uh, wire cutters themselves. And then the last, oh, and of course I've got a drill here and you see that I've got, right now I've got a uh, Phillips bit on this, but uh, I don't think that I'll need to be doing any drilling, but it certainly saves your hand a lot of trouble if you don't want to do everything by hand. And the last thing is a inch and a half uh, paddle bit, and that will actually be used to drill a hole in this one by eight in the back where the electrical cord here will come out. And uh, basically these are all the parts and components. I will mention real quick that my plan is to um, connect this to a gray lab timer um, so that I can you know time all my exposures certainly you can use the good old sunshine you know to make prints but obviously you've got a lot of other variables intensity of light different times of the year light is different um, you know you'd have a variable that you'd be chasing uh, all the time like they did back in the old days and so we're going about this in a little bit more systematic and structural type approach and really approaching this project as I would in the dark room where I want to minimize my variables I want to control uh, almost everything that I can and that would be from you know paper selection of course you know coating whether I do you know salted prints or albumin or Van Dykes or whatever it is we'll get into all that later but this uh, video on this project is clearly made uh, for those people that wanting to do a do-it-yourself uh, UV printer and then I'll talk about uh, different light sources and give you some tips on that later. So I'm going to get started building and I'll be back. Okay, in this first step I'm actually working on the base. So what I've actually done here is I've measured off three quarters of an inch all the way around the frame of the base because that's the thickness of the boards. I then uh, you know made sure the boards are all cut to the proper length and then I cleaned these edges uh, with a rag and I applied a bead of the liquid nails uh, here to set up and on this first back piece you'll see that I applied a bead here and then the next step what I'm going to do is start setting them into place and clamping them down and we'll do that next okay we're back you'll see that the base is basically built um, what I've done here is uh, glued it as I stated. You'll see these angle brackets that I talked about on the inside spaced. You'll see them on the uh, corners here and up here as well. This will add all the extra support and rigidity that we need all the way around. And you'll see the clamps uh, holding it uh, into place. And I'm gonna let this basically set overnight so that we've got good. And I'm just showing you all the way around it here. So uh, that is effectively our base. I'll go ahead and back up a little bit. You can see that's done. Then we'll move over to the electrical section next where I'll uh, figure out the spacing of the lights and do all the electrical wiring and show you how to do that. And uh, then we'll get into it next. The other thing I would mention, uh, I don't know what size contact printing frame you have, but with this 24 inch board, and the one by eight that effectively leaves you 22 inches on the side and on the depth. This way, uh, you would be left with 35 inches. So I'm doing 16 by 20s. So that is more than enough room for me. But I just wanted to mention that, that you may want to vary uh, the actual size of your um, base or your setup uh, based off of your needs. So, but effectively how you do it is the same. All right, we'll start on the electrical next. Okay, uh, we're back again. I've got the top part, which is the electrical part done. Uh, what I basically did here is, um, I'll get around to this side so you can see this a little bit better. Basically just took the fixtures and I spaced them out. I drew the mark where the uh, bottom was gonna come in here so I wouldn't overlap that. And I figured out the amount of space even between uh, all three fixtures. So I'll have six bulbs total here. Then I just took my three quarter inch number eight wood screws and attached each of the fixtures here. And then uh, this is the ballast here. And I just ran this up 
here to this junction box where I basically uh, just wire all this together and put the wire nuts on. And then the last step is I'll uh, attach this plate. And uh, this is the electrical cord that you're seeing here. When this sets in, the frame here is actually, this is the feet here that I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna let this dry overnight and I'll attach these feet on the bottom tomorrow. But I drilled an inch and a half hole here for the electrical cord uh, to come out. And basically the uh, project is in effect done. So I will just mention real quick while we're here, um, and I'll write probably a different blog article on this when I talk about the different and various options on uh, your printing uh, for your pop printing. But um, certainly, uh, I think I mentioned this, but these are T8 28 or uh, 24 inch fixtures. And um, some people have good luck with the traditional fluorescent uh, fixtures. Um, I uh, have uh, tested those and they certainly do okay. Also, uh, you may or you might want to try the BLB, which is the black light blue. Um, there's some really good um, you know, options there as well. So there you have it. This is the project and uh, I didn't want to get too far into the photography stuff. I just wanted to kind of keep it, you know, around the uh, context of getting this done from a project standpoint. And I'll be writing articles and actually using this in future videos. And we'll, uh, we'll talk about it then. So hope this is helpful for your printing and I'll see you again soon.